Hello, my name is Pam Curtis. I'm the CEO of Senior Resources of West Michigan, and I'd like to give you a little background on Senior Resources and Area Agencies on Aging. Area Agencies on Aging are experts in aging, especially home and community-based care. We were started back as part of the Older Americans Act back in the 1960s, but weren't put into federal law until 1974, but we've been around in our community since that time. There are over 600 uh, area agencies on aging nationwide, uh, so there is a network that can be tapped into by anybody in any state. So if somebody from the state of Michigan um, has a loved one that they're really concerned about down in Louisiana or in Arizona or California, uh, they can get in touch with the Area Agency on Aging from that person's community and find out what services are available. Senior Resources is one of 16 Area Agencies on Aging in the state of Michigan and we provide services to older adults and caregivers in Muskegon, Ottawa and Oceana counties. Our mission is to make sure that there's a comprehensive and coordinated system of services available to older adults and caregivers in our region. So we're trying to keep people independent in their homes for as long as possible and make sure that the services exist in the community to, to do that. Seniors are the fastest growing segment of the population right now and in the past 20 plus years we've seen a tremendous growth in the number of older adults um, and that is going to continue to grow. Uh, we have seen our budget grow from a $2 million budget back when I started over 20 years ago to a $22 million budget these days. And the number of people we've served have just, has just boomed with that as well. People often wonder where we receive our funding. We receive federal, state, and local funding to help the pro put the programs into the community. Those are your tax dollars at work and we like to be accountable to you on where those funds are going. We are also a pre-ambulatory health plan for Medicaid and provide a tremendous amount of services to keep older adults in their homes and out of nursing homes. In addition, we have some direct-to-consumer private pay programs for people that have the funds and are able to pay uh, out of pocket. We really focus on three different areas. If something doesn't fit into one of these three areas, it's probably not a good fit for uh, senior resources. We focus on um, area planning and program development. We go out into the community, we talk to older adults, we talk to f family members, we talk to caregivers, uh, talk to professional caregivers and ask them what are the needs that are in the community? What's missing? What's there? What does there need to be more of? And we put that all into a plan, a uh, three-year plan that we um, put in the community and we put into action. So that's how we base what services are gonna be funded in our three county area. The second area that we look at is access to services. And we're trying to get people to um, find those community services that are gonna help them stay in their homes. And so we have options counselors and supports coordinators within our office that do those types of things. The options counselors will um, talk to people on the phone, they'll listen to their story, and then help them decide uh, where it is that they need to get that help from. And it may be from one of our supports coordinators who will actually go out in the home and do an evaluation with the person in their home. Uh, there's just a variety of services that they can provide the access to. It could be uh, home delivered meals, um, in-home services such as homemaking or personal care, help with uh, bathing. If there's a caregiver involved, there could be respite care, um, but there's other community services as well, uh, such as legal services, um, transportation, any of those types of services are avail that are available, they can kind of walk through and find out what it is that that person needs and what's most important to them. Sometimes what's important to us as we go in and evaluate might not be what's important to the person they're talking to and it's important to listen to them and address their needs versus what we perceive their needs to be. We have some programs that'll help pay for those services. People can pay uh, privately out of their own funds or we can see what other programs they might qualify for in the community. Part of accessing services is that provider network and we contract with over 100 different providers in our three county region and those are um, local business, they're local agencies and they are our service network. Without them we are dead in the water and our older adults wouldn't be able to stay in their own homes. 
basically with accessing services, we want people to call us and tell us their story and we'll help hook them up and help them find uh, what they need in the community. The third area that we, that we really look at is advocacy. And advocacy can happen in a variety of different situations. It can happen in the home with those supports coordinators when they're out helping try to find a service for somebody. It can, ha it can happen in the local community with county commissioners going to talk to them if there's you know, something someone doesn't agree with or there's a, uh, something that they would like to see changed. And that goes with the state and federal legislator as, legislatures as well. Um, just getting out there, um, you could be advocating about funding, you could be advocating about elder abuse. Um, there's just a, a variety of different things. But advocacy takes on many forms. And so it's a very important part of what we do. We even have a senior advocates coalition group that meets um, regularly with our state and federal legislators.